need, I need the clicky thing. I'm kind of hoping that the microphone is gonna stay and blink out every now and then, because the idea that I might be suddenly speaking to the entire British public is really kind of appealing to me. <laughs> and I'll just add adrenaline to it. So, um, I just realized that I have no way to see my speaker notes. This is gonna be awesome. Those are not my speaker notes. Okay. That's okay. My name is Ryan Alexander, and I am the lead developer at the Money Advice Service. A quick bit of housekeeping for all of you. I will be putting these slides up on my website, rnalexander.com, after the talk. This is how to find me. Please note you don't have to capitalize the R, N, and A. I just do that because when you have lowercase R, N, and A, sorry? Uh, I'll be fine. Please note that if you, you don't have to capitalize it, but the reason why I do that is because if you have a lowercase R and A together, it looks really confusing. I would like to talk to you about how to improve your conversations. This is what Google says a conversation is. Um, but there's one very specific word in that definition I'd like you to pay attention to, and that's exchanged. Conversations are an exchange of ideas. They contain multiple concepts, and they all have to work together in order for that to happen. Um, one of the things that we do as lead developers is we navigate this brackish water between technical and non-technical people. We have to translate ideas in both directions, but we can't translate what we don't hear. So I would like to talk to you about how to improve conversations. Specifically, one very specific part of conversations, which is flow control. I've worked on a lot of teams, and I've had a really good chance to work with diverse teams on both technical and non-technical projects, and one of the things that I always end up paying attention to, asking myself is, how do we control who gets to talk? How do we determine who's next to speak? How does this torrent of conversation between us go back and forth? And the short answer is that we all do, but we do it collectively. In fact, we are doing it right now. That's everyone in the room and me. Now, I know this doesn't feel like a conversation, but there is actually a conversation happening. I am looking at all of you. I can see you. It's not at all intimidating. Um, <laughs> And see what you did? That was great, thank you. You just told me I was funny, and that makes me feel great. And it does. So even right now, I'm paying attention to a lot of signals from everyone in the room about how we're talking, and we all do this. We all have a way that we do this collectively. So this is the short answer, but the long answer is where we get into the real interesting stuff. We have complex, semi-conscious, real-time algorithms, which we use in collaboration with other people's complex, semi-conscious, real-time algorithms to control the flow of conversation. <sighs> <sighs> Managed to get all that out, that's great. If it sounds like a big mess, it really is. Because everybody's algorithm is different. So, this is where we can start hacking. All right, quick, uh, quick little confession. What I'm about to show you is not an original idea. It wasn't original by the people who did it. They actually take it from somebody else. I'll tell you about it in a second. It is, in fact, something that everyone in this room probably has already experienced to some extent, or at least a variant of it. And in fact, it's that childhood association that makes some people a little bit resistant to trying it. I'm going to hopefully convince you that you should take it on anyway. So here it is. These are the Occupy Together hand signals. These um, were used by people who were doing the Occupy Wall Street protests and other Occupy protests all over the world. They originally got them from Quakers who used them at their meetings to speak with one another and help control the flow of conversation in very large groups. And I'm just going to take you through them real quick. They're really simple. There's four of them for speaking, which are kind of more of the flow control of topics, and there's four for feeling, which are consensus modeling. Those two kind of go together. Just as a moment ago, when you all laughed, that was a consensus sign for me. That was telling me that you're still kind of with me, the way you look at me, your physicality. So this is kind of taking those signals 
and bringing them up to a more obvious level. And that's gonna have benefits, which I'll talk about in a second. So here we go, point of order, little triangle. That's just a way to tell someone that they're getting a bit off topic. Can you try to stay focused? Stay on what we're talking about currently, don't meander. Clarify, the other one doesn't have to be just, you know, C is for cookie, it's fine. That's the most important one in my opinion. That's the one that says, I don't understand what you're trying to say. I need your help to continue to participate in this conversation. This is the one you should stop for. But part of the nice thing about this one is because it's a little bit more of a guarantee. It says, I need you to stop, but it's only because I want to keep being with you. This is a great one. Next one is this, direct response. Finger pointing is sometimes a little bit confrontational. You can just point with your whole hand if you like. That means I want to talk about next, but I want to talk about the thing that you are talking about. I want to address the current topic at hand. And then there's this one. And this is the one that we all get a bit uncomfortable about usually because this feels like we're back in the classroom. Can I talk, teacher? Ooh, ooh, this is your inner Hermione. Which is cool, so you should like your inner Hermione. That's, that's awesome. But basically, this is the one that is a little bit weird because our association with this is that we are back in the classroom and we have an uneven power dynamic. The more you use this with people who are equals, the more that will go away. This means I want to talk about the next thing. I, when you are done, I wanna talk about this. The feeling ones, very simple. This is the one that everyone likes to do, watch this. All right, how do you like what I'm saying? Is this good? Put your hands. This is applause, by the way. This is applause for people who are deaf. This is kinda cool. This is assent. This is good. This is one thing really nice and magic about this one is that if you are talking with a group of people and everybody in the group is taking their hands like this, guess what? You can shut up. You've persuaded them. It's a nice, how many other scenarios do you have where you have a positive short circuit? It's great. This one, of course, don't like it as much. This one is, I really don't like this. And this one is, you have to stop. Now, in a professional setting, I almost never see this or this. And in fact, if you're in a professional setting, you should really question if you got to this point because that's probably not a good thing. But sometimes you use these in not so professional settings and that's a safety net for people. So, you know, don't leave them out. Okay, so. Our algorithms have problems. Specifically, in, in the time that I've been dealing with them and started noticing this and started bringing these in, there are two specific typical problems that I saw over and over again in how our conversational algorithms work. So I'm gonna talk to you about both of them and help you understand how these symbols can help solve those problems. And they are latency and assholes. <laughs> You're gonna deal with a lot of these. So, okay, first one. We use pauses in our languages as part of flow control signaling, and this causes race conditions. So, this is where latency screws us up, all right? Every time there's a pause in conversation, it's like someone's firing off a starting pistol, and that kind of start signal is when everyone goes and jumps in. Oh, I wanna talk, oh, I wanna talk, and even better, when they can see that that start pistol's coming, they kinda hunker down and get ready on their marks. Now, that's a race, and that race happens multiple times in every conversation. So, how far of a race is it if some of the people in the conversation can't hear the starting pistol for an extra second or two? They're never gonna win that race. So this is how the signals help, because the signals don't wait for a pause. It's okay to put your hand up while someone is still talking, because you don't have to wait for them to give you the open place in which to propose that new signal. That gets rid of the latency issue, somewhat. There'll still be a latency if you're putting your hand up if you're working over a remote connection. And if you really wanna see this in action, if you really wanna see where latency is gonna screw you up, remember what happens when you have people who are in two separate locations? Have you ever been in a meeting where you have a group of people over here and they're connected by one of those window remote screens with the other one? Have you watched how the conversation flows in that case? One side gets the stick for a while. They just get to talk amongst each other. And when they pause, it's only the people on this side who have a chance to really get into the race. So the conversation goes blah, 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 bl
And the real ironic thing about that is because usually the reason why you have these two people on either side of that window is because you want them to talk to each other. So it's actually really removing a lot of the value in that conversation. But even when you have the starting pistol going off at the same time that everyone can hear, there are just some people who are faster off the mark. In fact, there are some people who are not so good about waiting for the mark, which brings us into that second problem I was talking about. So this is really important. This doesn't get said enough, okay? Jumping into conversation is a skill that has nothing to do with the value of what you're gonna say. We have this illusion in our head that somehow the power of what we wish to say, the amazing ideas we wish to share imbue us with an ability to interrupt in conversation. Now that I've said that, does that sound right to you? No, of course that's crap. So if you want the value of those ideas, if you want them to get out with everything else, it is in your best, in, is in your best interest to try to remove that part of that equation. Not everyone who interrupts, not, not everyone who's good at interrupting is an asshole, but when you interrupt, you almost certainly are being an asshole. And it's even worse than that because the way our interrupt signals work, if you interrupt someone when they're speaking, everyone else who has been quietly waiting for their chance to get off the starting line goes back to quietly waiting and you won't even know that they were waiting, okay? You won't even tell. And those people who are waiting and those people who just quietly went back to waiting are disproportionately the marginalized voices. You want those ideas. There's value in those ideas. So the symbols help in three ways. The first way is they allow you to indicate that you wish to speak without having to interrupt. Two, they let you prioritize your interrupts so that you can actually see who needs a clarification because the person who's interrupting, they just interrupt. You don't know if they need it for part of the conversational flow where you want it to go or if they want it to take it somewhere else entirely. And the third way I have forgotten. Um, uh, the third way is that it lets you see everyone who you are going to take the place of when you speak because everyone can have their hand up or have their hand up or have their hand up and you can see that. So it, it lets you visualize the cost of taking over that spot. Okay, real quick. How am I doing for time? Perfect. There's a lot of things that I couldn't cover because I only had 10 minutes. But there's some really important points I'd like to fling it in. First of all, please, please remember that this doesn't work for audio-only connections and it doesn't work for people who are seeing impaired. What we are literally doing is we are pulling up a lot of physicality symbols that we actually have as part of our algorithms and we're putting them into a more explicit context for everyone. Well, at least everyone who can see them. So, you know, be mindful of that. This is really helpful for neurodiverse individuals who have trouble reading body language. And if you don't think that you have those, what are you doing in technology? <laughs> Where have you been? This helps people because it makes it, and it doesn't just make it, you know, it doesn't just make it visible. It kind of makes it equal so that everyone gets access to the same information. It can help encourage underrepresented people to contribute because instead of this, and it, this really needs to be said, Men don't get punished for interrupting the way that women do in society. It's not fair. We had that skill set, that interrupting skill set is not just, it's unevenly distributed and it's unevenly distributed across some really sexist lines. This helps that. Also, if you really want to go like, I care about this conversation, consider having a facilitator. We do it for other parts of our agile process. We have people who run retros, we have people who run uh, you know, stand-ups and all of these sorts of things, and this fits into that just fine. If you have a person facilitating a conversation, these symbols make it a lot easier for them to do that. And if you really want to go for the super bonus points, progressive stack, does anyone here know what a progressive stack is? Anyone know what? Okay, so this is practiced at the Occupy uh, talks. Really simple, progressive stack is 
choosing people on the basis of whether or not they've spoken or they are a group that you wish to have better representation. It is an active way to be more inclusive. It's an awesome thing if you can pull it off. So please give these a shot. Please come and talk up to me about this later. There is so many things that I haven't had a chance to discuss in this. Um, use these. You will be the better for it. Thank you. <laughs>